Discoveries were finding that some films had improp improper copyright. As I was go going through the Disney materials, I discovered that Steamboat Willie, Plain Crazy, and Galloping Gaucho all had problematic copyrights for various reasons. Several other shorts from early in the series also had problematic copyrights. With Steamboat Willie, there was registration without a copyright on the original title card and copyright after the initial showings. At the time, I thought these issues would of course never allow the use of those particular shorts since they would be fought in court if anyone ever attempted, but the proof was right there in black and white. Those early copyrights often have Ub's signature, Waltz, and Roy's as the copyright holders. Here's a page, above, from the now tattered copy of the Of Mice and Magic filmography I brought with me on that trip. The copyright office, at that point, hadn't updated their digital records to match renewals on every film, so these notes are me going back and checking the films that had the original copyright listed digitally but not the renewals. From dime to dime, with some here, I've made a note when the copyright in the digital record didn't match what was on the original records, and in one case, on this sheet, I make a note of one with an improper copyright, from dime to dime, 1960. In this case the copyright renewal was sent over a year after the expiration. The library attached the renewal attempt but noted it was added to the record after the period of renewal, making the film public domain. From these notes you can see there was a whole series of films from this period that matched the digital record, so I didn't need to make a note of them, and a whole series of titles that either didn't match the record or were not updated in the database yet. So, now, with all the chat about Steamboat Willie being public domain officially, I thought it might be fun to talk about what the next few years mean for classic animation availability, and why some things have been available, and why other things are not. One of the things that happened with large companies not wanting to release good materials on the films that are in the public domain is that some figured the material would be ripped off immediately by small producers. That's probably pretty accurate honestly, but what it also did is relegate many of those films to not very good copies available for viewing. The Fleischer Color Classics and the George Pal Puppetons come to mind immediately when thinking about just how poorly the available versions had traditionally been. Collector's prints, and some pretty decent reductions from 35mm materials, allowed for some idea of what the films should look like, but those were few and far between in the bigger picture. This is a collection of public domain cartoons that I have a theory, with some of these films becoming public domain, it will actually allow some of the bigger companies not caring as much about releasing good materials on the films since now everything from those periods will be in the public domain, making the place with the best versions the place to see them. Snappy Video and its successor, Thunderbean, was always trying to follow through with this idea, with, I think, some success. Now that streaming has become the predominant way of seeing films, it makes some sense for the largest companies to allow the material, public domain or not, to exist in the best versions possible and available all the time. In this way, those places will become known for being the best way to see them. You can look all over YouTube and see all sorts of people have uploaded Thunderbean stuff. Most of it is in the public domain, and sometimes they compress it great, sometimes not so much, and sometimes people re-upload and re-upload them into chunky digital oblivion. Still, they are available, and moreover, the people that really would like a good Blu-ray copy now know where the good versions are. I've never seen YouTube as a problem in terms of hurting sales on what we do, just the opposite in fact. So, it will be really interesting to see how it all plays out over these next years, I'll still be trying to license the best materials we're able to, public domain and not, with the idea of getting the best possible version. That isn't about copyright at all, but about an attempt to present the best versions possible since I know that our fans really love to see a film in the best version. That isn't going to change. Seeing the materials from Warner's and other studios over these past decade has been especially wonderful for fans. In this new environment and the possibilities for materials to have even more venues, I think we're in for some great surprises over these next period of time. Since a lot of the material still has interest from an audience, it's worth preserving in good versions, especially when materials are in danger. Now, if you'd like, enjoy Steamboat Willie or another cartoon that in the public domain, not thinking about whether it is or not. Have a good week everyone.